for whatever reason, I tend to think of a bike as like more than just a bike. Like it's got to have some sort of meaning to exist. And like, I can't build a bike that has no purpose. I think that that might be my style. Like whether it's a good bike or a shitty bike, like it's just that it's more than just a bike. It has like a real purpose to exist. And it's been thought out. You know, I'm probably not the best manufacturer, but I think that what I have to offer is maybe an aesthetic overall package that works well. You know, I always try to offer something new and something that has a story. All your bikes have crazy stories behind them, and I'm like, I think that's just part of it. Like, it's gotta exist for a reason. You can't just build a bike because it's gonna be cool, you know, like, or maybe you can't, I don't know. <laughs> maybe I got it all wrong, I don't know. Lately is, I mean, yeah, this has been it. Like it's wake up at seven and go to bed at two and just day in, day out. Oh, it's definitely getting old for sure. We were hoping to be in Mexico by now on a beach. <laughs> we're definitely not. So it's just, it's just like anything. Like people do it all the time. They just want to do something and you just kind of block out everything else. and and go and focus on that that one thing, whether it's healthy or not at that, that time. My mom would say otherwise. I guess I'm living what my dream was when I was 18, trying to figure out like, what are you gonna do with your life? But I've obviously discovered that this isn't exactly what I wanna be doing. And um, so no, it's not my dream job yet, I guess. And I'm trying, still trying to chase after that dream of of evolving it and I think a lot of people kind of get to this point and get stuck there. And it's like, well fuck, I have this shop, I have all this stuff, I have customers, blah, blah, blah. And then they just like, 20 years go by and you're fucking, <laughs> have a shitty marriage, kids that don't really know you. And that's what I was seeing as like this black hole of just like going down it, so. I'm trying to intervene early not get there. <laughs> Probably for the last eight months, I haven't really done any customer stuff. It's just been pretty much preparing these bikes for a trip and doing a couple little side jobs here and there and trying to work on some products that I'm trying to release. But otherwise, it's, yeah, it's just, it's been great to focus on my own stuff. Kind of just whenever you get bummed, you just remind yourself that it's going to be awesome. Like 15 year old me could see me, like I'd probably think it was a tool, but you know, I mean, at least I ride a cool motorcycle. I think at one point I realized, like, oh, I have to do something with my life. Oh no. You know, growing up, you've got as many influences in your life as you do, you know, and I could have done anything that didn't require a lot of ambition. I'm here like 75 hours a week and I make less than minimum wage. This has proved like year and year again to not really be motivated by financial success.
basically what I built is just dictated by what I have. Um, it's whatever floats across the radar, which is usually just either cheap, it's always vintage, British or Italian. You know, it's just gotta be a little bit of a pain in the ass, um, a little bit finicky, um, but it's always gonna be old. My life is a pain in the ass, so that I like things that just fit into that, you know, that reflect that, you know, it's just, I don't, I don't like easy. Oh, you fucking cocksucker. Everything I own is complicated. I think with this shop, I wanted to create something that wasn't real standard motorcycle shop. You could come and talk for a while. We're open that way. I wanted to be that, that person that actually is there to help people out. And most people, they have a hard time understanding it. You know, they'll, they'll come in and they're just like, well, what is this place? Well, it's a coffee shop and a motorcycle shop. And they're like, but what do you guys do? We serve coffee and we help people with their motorcycles. You get to talking to them and I think they expect you to be just somebody that doesn't involve themselves with motorcycles. They just think that, like, we're just trying to make money at it. I grew up skateboarding and I grew up snowboarding and like, you never went to the dudes that were just in it for money. You went to the shop that supported the cause or the scene and, and the community and like, that made a lot of sense to me, you know? The first time I ever rode was we took our CBs down to Fernley Raceway. A good friend, Big Al McElroy, was like, why don't you try a real bike? And then I was like, oh, I got this and was doing, you know, a buck 80 down the straightaway. It just became an infection and I had to get a fast bike. There's kind of little that exists in the world to compete with going that fast on a motorcycle. <laughs> it's really a spectacular experience. I guess I just look at it as like, if everything burnt down in here tomorrow, it would all be gone. Building a life with some sweet memories and experiences is becoming a lot more important to me now. Once I realized like where a bike can take me and the experiences that it can give me, that's when there was like a really big light switch as far as what I want to be building. It was really when I realized like how much of the world there was to see. Kind of the funnest part about trips is breaking down and you kind of meet the best people when that happens because shitty people don't stop to help you so you don't meet shitty people you meet awesome people that are gonna like take the time to show you things and help you fix things and those are like pretty awesome things that happen to you when you're kind of exposed to not you know having all your comforts with you going on. A desire to step back from what we're doing and reflect on it. The shop has been like a luxury to have for sure like as far as breaking down and traveling and fixing and just being like a home base to have spare parts you know everything you need to rebuild the bike but the fun thing within the road is you don't have that. As long as 
come back alive, it'll be a success whether the bike's in one or two pieces or three pieces or, you know, duct tape back together. I don't really have any plans. It's just see where things go and see what happens. this sense of like trying to preserve something. I don't even understand why. Vintage shit. Aesthetically, it did look better. You look back and, and motorcycles were simpler. History stopped in like 1978 with this bike. If it's made it 50 years without some fuck, fucking idiot, like, taking a blowtorch or a hacks out to it, like, I don't want to be that idiot, you know? Like, it's got to be fucked up before I'll fuck it up. When I'm real, real little, there was uh, my old old man's bike in the garage. I spent, like, half my fucking childhood and stuff on the back of, back of his bike. I remember the first time I got, like, like a ride on a, on a real motorcycle or whatever, I was probably like, six or seven years old or whatever, and just going like 60 or 70 felt like, this is not fucking safe, you know? Like every once in a while, I still get that same feeling and, I, and I've grown to, grown to love it. I can't help it. I have to play with motorcycles. It's all I really think about. I spent a lot of time thinking about the, the process and the build and everything that goes into it. Uh, and I try to spend as much time as I can riding the thing. The ride justifies the build. So why'd you build it if it wasn't gonna get rid? I think I truly love motorcycles. For better or for worse, I think when you love something, you also hate it too sometimes. How I counter it is I just remind myself, like, this is what I want to do, so I'm just going to be happy doing it. It's just work, but at least it's fun and people like it. just don't even think about the building aspect. It's just part of it. It's the end goal is, is the part that I think is really, really interesting, you know? I just eat, live, and breathe motorcycles like I can't help it. <laughs> 